Hey, I don't know how exciting this is going to be, but I'm um, feeling a bit ugh about a lot of things. Uh, and I'm trying to stay awake still because this small person is not going down in their cot. So, um, yeah. Trying to stay awake. Hopefully, get a nap in the day. So, anyway, so I'm going to be playing some Warlock of Fire Top Mountain. It's going to be less of a let's play, more of a let's read. And I'm going to do my best to describe the images and the combat. I'll probably end up just talking about tabletop things during the combat because this is the Switch version of Warlock of Fire Top Mountain, which is a sort of modernish game where you've obviously got to choose your own adventure because it's based upon the first of Ian Livingston's fighting fantasy books. And oh, Ian Livingston, Ian, Ian Livingston, and Steve Jackson. Those two chaps who did lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff in the realms of Choose Your Own Adventures and tabletop role-playing stuff. I think it's... Is it the same Steve Jackson that did GURPS and Munchkin? Might be. Might be a different one. Anyway, I, I like the system. Um, and I like the story. So we're greeted with an image of... What's her name? Ariana, who's a lady who collects souls and has a shop that you can go to later, like just before you go into the big thing. Uh, I have yet to actually finish a run on this. I always die at some point or get to a point where I'm like, I don't really know what to do when I'm getting fed up. So, anyway, she says, Welcome back, player. I select, let me begin a new journey. Which figurine will you take into Firetop Mountain this time? And we're going to select. And who are we going to get? So, there's Linka Cardi, Deki and Strom, Alexandra Blacksand, Aaron Gottspeed. I could get a new person because I've got 225 souls, which I think is enough to get a new person. I don't think I've got enough for one of the ones from the expansion. So, I'll start with. The these ones, right? Zewana Shu, Kriya Dutter, Hannah Belda, Hap, Landry Lauren. What are you? How much do you take? You cost 150 souls. I can do you. You've got a cool hat. You've got a cool hat. That's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember what any of the dealies are. But, okay. Okay, I think. Uh, okay, looking at that. Okay. Hannabella Dehab is the daughter of a wealthy merchant from Silverton. She could, if she wishes, live comfortably in her father's home with her every whim taken care of. But that's not Hannabella's style. She prefers the life of an adventurer, sleeping where she lays her sword and testing herself against the most fearsome opposition she can find. <coughs> um, let's quickly see what this Kriya person is. Uh, oh, that's an archer lady from the Nomadic Clan of Mercenaries. Champion of the Bone Oh, that's a barbarian. Uh, person with a big thing. And I think after that point, they are out of my price range. So, yeah, I think what we'll do, we'll go Hannibal. Hannibal, because she's got a cool hat. Buy her. Oh, she's all coloured in now. Yeah, so this one, you select a little miniature, and it's like doing a little tabletop all to yourself. Yes. Well, we'll erase the current playthrough, but I do not mind. So I've yet to actually finish this. Right. Travel to Firetop Mountain. My little miniature hops along, like you often would when you're playing D&D. Go, but 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 Like you're playing... Ludo, or something similar. Ludo, or Cluedo, or Budo. Oh, Americans don't have Cluedo, do they? Right. 
At last, your two-day hike is over. Shielding your eyes from the sun, you look up at Firetop Mountain and can see the eerie red colouring, probably some savage vegetation, which has given the mountain its name. You have heard tales of many tricks and traps set within the dwarven halls of the mountain, home to the dwarves long before Zagor took up residence within. You seek the icon of Verlang, a statue of the dwarven god of metal and metal workers, a contact of yours that delivers supplies to a band of orcs within the mountain, heard that the trinket was placed under the table bearing a cursed helm. They also mention that you will need to unlock the table in a certain order, while they cannot remember the order. Your contact is sure someone in the mountain will know. Undeterred, you shall sneak into the orc's domain and steal the icon from under their stubby noses. You will fetch a handsome price back home in Silverton. At the advice of your supplier contact, you find the old cave entrance that is used by the orcs to come and go. You pull out your short sword and tentatively approach. Your adventure starts here. And we see an image there of the cave with a withered tree out in front of it. Peer into the gloom. You see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. Hearing faint scurrying to the east, you light your lantern. These kinds of places always make my heart race. I'm looking forward to exploring this famous mountain. We step warily into the blackness. Alright, let's approach the fork ahead. Right, I'm not going to follow, follow the scurrying, that seems to go to turn west. A little way along the passageway, you come to what is clearly a sentry post. A sleeping orc, or goblin, or something. He's got a little pole arm and a little horny hat. You approach with caution, and can see an orc in leather armour asleep at his post. My contact mentioned that the orcs were quite lazy, but I never expected this. You carefully approach the sleeping orc. There is no other way through the orc other than straight in front of him. You could try to sneak past, or perhaps a direct approach might be better. We're going to try and tiptoe past. Taking a deep breath, you try to tiptoe past the sleeping orc. Test our skill! Right. Will we roll the dice, please? Alright, I got a 10. You needed a score of 9 or under, and rolled a score of 10. Awkward. You kick a loose stone, and the orc's eyes flick open. There's an angry snore from the orc as he wakes. He grumpily gets up with a start, draws his weapon, and snarls at you, ready to fight. Now to fight the orc guard, oh well. It's only the one, at least. Okay, so if I remember correctly, it gives you a hint as to like what they're going to be doing. Um, what I want to do, I think, is... Oh, I what I do. Okay, so I'm going to choose to attack. Yeah, now this fucker... Okay, so he attacks straight forward. I can attack diagonal. Can I wait? There we go! Cheeky attack on him! Right, he's going to do something that way, so we're going to move there. Yeah! Got him! That's two souls towards the next character unlock. Victory, you are triumphant. You lost no stamina, you gained two souls. You have defeated the orc guard. We hop on ahead. The passageway begins to widen until you enter a cave. However, blocking the cave's exit are two of the ugliest creatures you have ever seen. They have the proportions of dogs, but their hide is rough and scaly. 
each beast is chained to the cave wall, secured to their thick brass collars. The two orc hounds begin to snarl and strain at their chains. They cannot reach you, but their chains are long enough that should you approach, you will not be able to escape their slathering jaws. Disgusting creatures. Orcs really shouldn't keep pets if they're not going to look after them. You're going to deal with them quickly, one way or another, before they attract the attention of the orc patrol, or maybe something even worse. So I can either distract the orc hounds with some food, or draw my weapon and do what has to be done. Uh, I've got loads of stamina, and there'll be... yeah. Okay, let's just fight them. Drawing your weapon, you prepare to engage the orc hounds in combat. However, because they are chained to the walls, their movement is limited. Yeah, I vaguely remember this. So it's been a while, I haven't really played it very much. Right, we'll go this way. Move that. Um, right, uh, we're going to attack that one. There we go. That's one dead walk. Not one dead hound, even. Right, attack. No, oh, he can only go that way. Okay. So let's wait for him to go there. And then, yep, there we go. Victory, you're triumphant. I just beat up some dogs. You have defeated the orc hounds. Gained four souls. Leaving the cave as quickly as you can, you notice a new passageway as it turns north. And there's a little stump with a little seat on it. Set against the wall is a wooden bench where you may rest. Player, I would strongly advise you sitting on this bench. If you do not, Hannibal de Hab will not be likely to resurrect at this location if they perish. <sighs> Hannibal de Hab will not be like will not be able to. <laughs> All right, let's try this uh, from the beginning, from the top. Player, I would strongly advise sitting on this bench. If you do not, Hannah Bella de Hab will not be able to resurrect at this location if they perish. Sit on the bench and rest. Sit on the bench and rest. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. Plus five stamina. I didn't lose any anyway. Continue on the passageway. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there's a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a rasping sound, which may be some kind of creature snoring. We're going to open the door. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the centre of the room is a rickety wooden table, on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress, groaning in the far corner of the room is a green-skinned orc. He is a stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. He must be the guard for the night watch. Another lazy orc. At least I should be able to get my hands on that box easily. Right, what we're gonna do? We're gonna try. Let's try stealing the box without waking the orc. Although, this one. Oh, I'm second guessing myself because I vaguely remember some things. At some point, there is a box with a snake in it. That's a thing I remember. Anyway, let's try. Treading softly. You easily extract the wooden box from under the table. Your luck holds out as you easily back out of the room without waking the orc. You leave the room and open the box in the passage. A hidden compartment has been knocked loose, revealing a cache of gold pieces. There's also a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. Got four gold pieces. You release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Continue onward. Follow the passage. You arrive at another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. We're going to open it anyway. Might as well. You 
The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the centre of the room there is a makeshift wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Under the table is a small box, and using your keen eye you can see that it moves every so often. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. Right, that's the thing I remember. Okay, so... Different characters have different abilities, which changes the way that they see situations. On the narrative always changes with each character as well. It's quite clever like that. It's a very well done little game. Um, so, because this lady's like an adventurer of sort, as in like a Indiana Jones style adventurer. At least, that might just be me making assumptions based on hats. Um, anyway, she's got a keen eye. So she saw that the box has something in it. So we're going to thrust our weapon in first. Cautiously, you open the box with a quick and quickly thrust. Excuse me. Cautiously, you open the box and quickly thrust your weapon within. There is an angry hiss, which is quickly silenced. Looking more closely, you discover what you have skewered, some angry snakes that were trapped inside. Looking more closely, you discover a key, which you quickly take. Zagor's key found! The stale, dirty room does not seem to have any more secrets to hide. You decide to continue to head deeper into the York barracks. Right. Uh, we've got a split in the tunnel. We can go north or east. I'm going to go east. It's a bit of a change. You follow the passage as it slopes downwards until you find yourself at the corner of a large chamber. The architecture suggests that this was originally made by dwarven hands, but has clearly been repurposed by the orcs. It appears to have been turned into some kind of training hall. Dotted around the chamber are a number of wooden posts that bear the marks of axes and other weapons. A cacophonous din echoes around the hall as green-skinned creatures in leather armour either strike the posts with their swords or each other with wooden cudgels. You guess this is what passes for a training session among the brutish orcs. I want to burst into this room and take them all on, but somehow, I don't think that's sensible. At the eastern end of the chamber there are two doors, halfway along the north wall of the hall is another doorway, secured by an iron gate. Right, so we can creep to the iron gateway in the north, but I think that I won't be able to open that. We can sneak into the doors at the east end. We can burst into the room and take on all the orcs with overwhelming odds, or we can go back the way I came and choose the other path. I think we're going to sneak past. Keeping close to the wall, you begin to make your way around the edge of the chamber towards the far end of the hall. Test my skill! Right, I think I'm trying to... Uh, okay. You needed a score of nine or under, and rolled a score of six. We sneak past the orcs. Fortunately, you make it to the far side of the chamber without any of the orcs noticing. One door has a dented shield nailed to it, while the other has a battered helmet hanging from it. Being cautious at this stage is definitely the right thing to do. We're going to go with a battered shield. You find yourself inside a moderately sized chamber and are immediately hit by a wall of heat. On the far side of the chamber is a crude forge, its coals growing red hot. In front of it, a heavy set orc is hammering out the dents in a damaged breastplate over an anvil. Nearby are two goblin assistants. One of them is eagerly watching its master repairing the armour, while the other is cowering in fear in the corner. Evidently, this miserable creature has been recently punished. Now there's a surprise. Orcs have, an in have the intelligence to make their own armour. Hearing you enter, the orc armourer looks up 
an angry expression on his ugly face. He must face the armorer. Surprised, giving an angry bellow, the orc armorer charges at you, his scorched leather apron flapping about him, his heavy hammer raised, ready to deal you a fatal blow. The goblins shriek with glee as they rush over, no doubt to curry favor with their master. Fight the orc armorer. I think if I went into... Instead of the battered shield, if I went into the helmet one, I think that there was there would be some orc armor there I could wear and pretend I was an orc. I think that's a thing I could do. Right. I'm going to do an attack in that vague direction. Okay. Let's do that again. Pop. And... Oh. Okay. Yep, so I've attacked one of the goblins. And... Oh, we're doing a clash. And I think I won that one. So the... Oh. Yeah. If we just play quite defensively against the goblin... Oh, we're doing a clash again. I said, I've killed one of the goblins. Oh, I lost the clash against the uh, armorer. I'm going to move over there. And I'm going to do a protected strike against... Nope. Ah, he's not, not, not that stupid. Yep, and we're clashing again. Oh no, I lost that one too. This guy's kicking my ass. Right, move that way. Yeah, that fucker. It's not stupid. There we go. Hit that bastard. Ah, oh, man. Okay, we're doing okay. Yep, killed them. Lost five stamina, gained six souls. Not too bad. You've defeated the orc armor. The battle done, you quickly search the armorer's room and find the orc's loot inside a small chest. You scoop up the coins and stash it into your pack. Twelve gold pieces. And I thought orcs were poor wretches. You learn something new every day. With nothing else of interest in the armory, you decide to leave. We'll leave the armory. Uh, let's open the door with a helmet. So I think this is where I get. You find yourself in a cramped room full of battered helmets, rusted hauberks, and suits of leather armor. The contents of the armory are inferior compared to what you were wearing. This strikes you that if you wear a few choice items over the top of your own gear, you might be able to pass yourself off as an orc. Yep. You take an orc helmet and assorted pieces of armor, attempting to hide your own features. You gag as you do so. The stench is almost unbearable. However, it might just fool the orcs. Unfortunately, the armor is rather cumbersome, making you a bit more clumsy. I've lost minus one skill. That's a bit unfortunate. Right, let's investigate the gateway to the north. The orcs are so engrossed in what they are doing, it makes so and making so much blah, 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 blah. The orcs are so engrossed in what they are doing and making so much noise while they are doing it that they do not notice you as you make your way to the iron gate, open it, and enter the small room beyond. At its centre stands what looks like scarecrows made of battered armour, their supporting poles sunk into a strange arrangement of wooden cogs and gears. As the gate swings shut behind you, the training quintains shudder as they activate. Although, although whether powered by magic or the curious wooden mechanism, you do not know. Fight them. Right, okay. That's fun. Um, okay, I don't think... I assume I wouldn't... I won't get any souls from this. Like, attack. Yep. And attack. 
Okay, so these don't know how to diagonal. Yeah, there we go. Broke them. Smashed them up. You've defeated the training dummies. Gain souls, though. How do they have souls? The Quintains eventually grind to a halt, your blows having irreparably ruined the wooden workings. Examining the leftover debris of the Quintains, your keen eye spots something else glinting in the middle of the rubble. Got two gold pieces! You find nothing of use in the training room. Okay. Making your way back to the western side of the hall, you decide to take the northerly of the two exits available to you, reasoning that this one will lead you deeper into the mountain more quickly. Okay. You arrive at the end of a passage in the freeway junction. Uh, let's see what this is to the west. You listen at the door and hear angry shouting coming from within. Open the door and investigate. You open the door to a large room. A large chair behind a solid-looking table suggests that someone or something of rank uses this room. Now we see a picture. It's an orky goblin-y chap with lots of with actual armor on. He's wearing sort of well, you know, it's fantasy chainmail and a cloak and a helmet. He's got a whip and he's whipping a smaller goblin-y orky creature. In the corner of the room stands a strange-looking orc with a warty face, standing over a smaller orc. With a whip in hand, he has been beating his servant, who is whimpering beneath him. I must put a stop to this torture. Very nasty indeed. Um, so I can either attack them both, spring at the orc and hope his servant will aid you, offer the orcs five gold pieces. Uh, I'll leave quickly and run back to Junction. I'm going to offer them money. So I've got money. I don't think I'm going to do that well. Furious, you shout at the orcs. Enough, you cry. Such petty brutality. Why not buy yourself something nice instead? You take out your coin purse, and the two orcs' eyes light up greedily. They begin to close in on you, arms outstretched. Oh dear, perhaps this wasn't the wisest way to approach these two nasty creatures. In a panic, you throw a handful of gold coins across the room. The coins glitter as they catch the light, bouncing across the flagstones. The two orcs get on their hands and knees and begin squabbling pettily as they fight over the gold pieces scattered on the floor. You take the opportunity to leave while they're both distracted. Ah, oh, I should have fought them. Oh well. We'll keep going eastwards, see what happens. Another junction of passwords, and then northwards, or continue eastwards. Let's continue eastwards. The passage ends at a solid wooden door, or metal hinges. Listening to the door, you hear strange mutterings and the clatter of what could be pots and pans. Whatever is in there, there are several of them. There will be more orcs, come on, you're at the orc place. You open the door into a large room, which must be the orc's dining room. Sitting round a large table are five orcs, busily drinking and dribbling their bowls of rat gizzard soup. All are involved in a rowdy argument as to who will get to chew the rat bones left in the large soup cauldron. So they do not see you enter. I should try to avoid a confrontation if I can. Right, use a disguise to walk past them. Cautiously, you step into the dining room. The orcs are all busy guzzling their vile soup. So hopefully, it should be no problem to walk past them. Test my luck. You needed a score of 11 or under. You rolled a score of 7. You make for a convincing orc. You safely reach the eastern side of the room. Three doors are nearby, and, out, and the way out lies back on the other side of the room. So, let's go to the north. The door opens to a chilly larder. Most of the food being stored here is clearly for a more inhuman palate. However, you do find enough pieces of mold-free fruit, 
to not and not too stale bread to make up two meals worth of provisions. You take a second look through the larder. Your keen eye spots a hidden stash of delicious nuts and berries. Obviously, the orcs have no interest in these, but for you, they make up another meal of provisions. Ugh, the smell, the look, just no. Ooh, berries. Return to the dining room. Let's try the east. The door opens easily as you enter a humid chamber. Oh, I know, it's sweaty and gross, isn't it, little girl? The air is thick with smells of unpleasant things being boiled in a large cauldron that hangs over a fire in the centre of the room. Let's look around the kitchen. Oh, are we going to wake up? Well, let's finish here. Yeah. On the opposite side of a bubbling cauldron stands an obese orc cook. There we go. It is stirring what appears to be intestines into a seething broth. Does not appear to have spotted you yet through all the steam. A goblin is holding jars of spices, eagerly hoping to assist its master in some way. Or I can either leave before I'm seen or attack the cook. Well, I'm not going to be able to get anything from this room if I don't attack the cook then. The orc's huge belly wobbles as it waddles towards you, ready to chop you into little pieces with the cleaver it is wielding in one hand. Its goblin apprentice throws its spice jars at you. They clatter harmlessly off. Okay. So let's see how well. Okay. We're going to attack this way. Oh, no. The goblin cook can reach across the fire. Okay, right, we'll go this way then. Right, let's... Attack. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're trying to do. Right, let's move. Oh! Right slash. Oh, we clashed with the goblin cook. Yep. Oh, got to... Uh, we're clashing with the little goblin. Ah, no. We might lose. We might die here. Which would be pretty good timing. But, yeah, protected strike. Let's try that. Oh, my God. All right, I'm at least guarded. I hit him in the face. All right, regular attack. Yeah, okay. So the cook's dead. Uh Clashing with the little guy, and I won that clash. No, it's oh, I missed him. No, oh, and I missed him again, and we're clashing again. And I think I won that clash. Yep, there we go. I am triumphant. I lost four stamina, I gained four souls. I've defeated the orc cook. The cook dead, you briefly toy with the idea of tipping it into its own cooking pot. There's nothing in the cook's kitchen that you would even consider eating. Tip over the pot. With a mighty kick, you tip over the pot, and grotesque contents spill out onto the floor. Some of the vile soup begins scalding the bodies of the dead orc and goblin. Unidentifi uh, unidentifiable ingredients are strewn about on the floor. While somewhat satisfying, your vandalism was fruitless. There's nothing of value in the pot. Okay, so I could have, should have just left the kitchen. Okay. Uh, let's go to the south. Let's see what's in there. You enter what is quite clearly a storeroom. You spend some time searching the cupboards around the room, but find only crude bowls, plates, and spoons. And then, on a dresser, you find a leather case. Exciting! I wonder what it contains in here. Let's open the case. The case opens easily, and inside you find a magnificent bow and one silver arrow. An inscription on the case says, The giver of sleep to those who never can. Cool. Will you take the silver bow and arrows? Yes, please. 
you put the bow, arrow, and case in your pack and leave the storeroom. Gain one luck. With nothing else of interest in this room, you decide to leave. Leave through the door to the west. Turn northwards. The passageway leads into a square dungeon chamber. There are two doors on the eastern wall and two on the western wall. On the opposite side of the room, another passageway leads away to the north. The, the first door to the right is well used, and putting your ear to the keyhole, you listen and hear a man screaming for help from the inside. Before deciding what to do next, you listen at the other doors as well. From behind the second door to your right, you hear a thumping sound on the walls. Hello? Hello? Not funny! Open door! The first door to the left is made of a solid metal. Listening at the door, you hear a sound of tortured screams coming from within. Putting your ear to the second door to the left, you hear nothing. Those cries sound like unfortunate individuals. Maybe I should investigate. Okay, right, I have to be very careful because I know one of these is going to be in an, an ambush. Because I vaguely remember that. I'm dressed as an orc and there's a guy who's just a regular guy. Poor chap, he will not talk to me though because I'm dressed as an orc. Right. Second door on the right is the one which has... Okay, second door on the right. As you approach the door, the banging gets louder and its start, bolt starts to shake. Come on, Nurk! Let out! Waking up! Sliding back the rusty bolt and opening the door, you come face to face with a panicked looking goblin with a horrific creature stand closing in behind it. Slime beast! Slime beast! Run! squeaks the panicked goblin and lashes out at you. The toad like slime beast joins in on the fray opening its wide mouth. It is full of long, spiked teeth. A spiky slime chap. Right. I'm going to attack the slime beast. I'm gonna attack the slime beast. Oh, that's not worked. Attack a strike on the slime beast. Yeah. Attack Goblin. Attack Goblin. Attack Goblin. Attack Goblin. Yep. There we go. I lost no stamina. I gained four souls. I defeated the monsters. Initially, it looks as though there is nothing of value in the slime beast cell. However, upon a second glance, you notice a blue candle sitting in the muck. Take the blue candle. Well, it's an odd place for a candle. You decide to take it with you. It may come in handy in one of the darker areas of the mountain. You put it in your backpack. Leave the slime beast cell. Uh, I don't want to contain the screaming man. I want to do the torture one. Is the bloody the, 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 the screaming man's going to just attack me? Okay. Oh, wobbly. Oh, dizzy bit tired. The door is not locked and opens. The room in front of you seems to be a small torture chamber with various torture devices around the walls. In the centre of the room, two small hunchback goblins are having their fiendish way with a dwarf who is tied to a hook on the ceiling by his wrists. The two hunchbacks are poking and cutting him viciously with their swords. The dwarf lets out a final scream and falls silent, eyes closed. His, ap uh, the, his captors make disappointed noises and look around angrily at you, as if it were your fault that the dwarf has collapsed. You must act quickly. I can either close the door quickly, avoid getting involved, draw your weapon and fight the, your, the creatures, or I could give the dwarf a jab with your sword, put on an evil laugh for the torturers. I'm going to fight these guys. Two evil creatures give a loud shriek as they rush to forward to attack you. Readying your weapon, you dive into battle. Fight the goblins. I don't think there's any advantage to this, but might as well. 
Hmm. All right, doing a power clash with a goblin, and I win it. Hurt the goblin for three. Okay. Power clash again with the goblin. Because I got um, a diagonal attack, it's actually very easy to sort of get around these enemies. Like, at this point, like, enemies are quite simple. You know, they only really do melee attacks. So you don't have to be careful about moving anyway. You just have to attack nearish to them and hope they move there. The, um, the actual battle system, like... Everything simultaneous, so the attacks and your movement are simultaneous. You only move one square at a time, anyway. So you can walk into an enemy attack, or you could be dodging an enemy attack. You get an idea that they're about to do something because the um their their miniature wobbles a bit. But what you can do is you can uh, you can aim to attack a square for when they move into it. It's very clever. Like I say, it's a really good little system. Anyway, you have defeated the goblins. You cut down the dwarf with the last of his strength. He opens his eyes, looks up at you, then looks downwards. His eyes close again. This time, he breathes his last. You gently rest the dead dwarf on the floor. As you look around the room, your keen eye notices something amiss with the heel of the dwarf's boot. Examine the dwarf's boot. You decide to search the dwarf's boots. There appears to be nothing inside them. But one of them seems to be rattling. You see, you take a closer look and inspect the heel, and you find that it comes off. Out comes a small, smooth stone. Take the stone. You pick up the stone. You notice that there is a dwarven rune carved upon it. You have a feeling that this will be useful, and pocket it. As you have completed such a swift search of the dwarf, you still have some time before more goblins arrive. Let's search the goblins. Bravely, you search the bodies of the two dead goblins. As you go through their pockets, you find a large piece of sweet-smelling cheese. Take the cheese. You take the cheese. Who knows? It might just come in handy. You decide to leave the torch chamber before you're discovered. Alright, and I want the second door last left. The door is unlocked. Opening it, you find yourself at the threshold of an orc's weapon store. A torch hangs from one wall, lighting up a small armory room, stocked with swords, shields, helmets, daggers, breastplates, and the like. Oh, Missy. Grumpy Grump. Grumpy Grump, sweaty girl, doesn't want to be in a cot. I know. <laughs> Once we leave this little area, I think we'll leave it at that for now. Maybe do it again later. Although knowing me, I'll probably forget. Um, come on up, you come. Oh yeah, grumpy grump. Grumpy grumpy grump. Ah, uh, come here. On you come. There we go. There we go. Oh, we're not feeling it. We're not feeling it. Maybe we're hungry. You haven't eaten for a few hours, you know. Okay, we'll leave it there then. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Right. Um, I hope people enjoyed this. Uh, one sec. Uh, da -da -da -da. I want to. Uh, 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 uh. Return to the main menu, please. We'll resume that later. Yes, 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 yes. Let's take you back to your mummy, because I think you're hungry. I think you're hungry. All right, good night. <laughs>